Alright, so today we're looking at graphing uh, square root functions, and we've got a, h, and k back, the vertical translations, the horizontal translations, a stretches the graph vertically, and b stretches the graph horizontally. So looking up here, the function itself looks different, but the values a, b, h, and k have the same roles on our functions. The parent function for square root is f of x equals the square root of x. The domain is x such that x is greater than 0. Your range, y is greater than 0 for the parent. And the range may change as well as the domain depending on what our values are. Our reference points are 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, 2 from the parent. So we're going to be looking at graphing some functions using those reference points and how it changes on the parent function. So we've got five examples that we're going to go through. Um, we're going to go through a couple where we're graphing and a couple where we're actually writing the equation from the graph and going backwards. But to start, for each of the transformed square root functions, find the transformed reference points. Use them to plot the transformation, transformed function. Describe the domain and the range. So we're going to look at writing domain and range for it. But the first off we need to do is identify what A, B, H, and K are doing. So we want to make sure that we're following along with the A, B, H, and K. We want to look at what our domain and what our range is. Um, and the domain is really what's going to happen with this radical. Because remember, on a square root, we can't take the square root of a negative number. So to find our domain, we can say x minus 3 has to be greater than 0. That means x has to be greater than or equal to 3. Keeping with what we did before, that's our domain. Now, our range is pretty easy to follow because if we take this value that we've listed here for the domain and we plug it in, we will get the range. So my range is going to be y such that y is greater than or equal to. Well, if I plug in 3 here, 3 minus 3 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Times 2 is 0. Minus 2. So it has to be greater than negative 2. And we're going to look at that and how it is on the graph in just a little bit. But this is giving us our domain and our range. Now, to be able to graph the function, we're going to use the reference point. But before we use reference points, a is 2, b we don't have a b value, but our h value is 3, and our k value is negative 2. So we want to look at how that changes each of these reference points. So we have 0, 0. We have, whoops, let's see, 1, 1, and we have 4, 2. So remember, the a value, that changes the graph vertically. So that's going to get multiplied to the y value. The h value translates the graph horizontally, so it's going to get added to the x. And the k value translates the graph vertically, so it's going to get added to the y value after we multiply it by the a. So let's look at where we are. So 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 times 2 is 0 plus negative 2 is negative 2. And we do the same thing to the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2, plus a negative 2 makes it 0. And then our last point, 4 plus 3 is 7. 2 times 2 is 4, plus a negative 2 is 2. We're going to graph these new points on our grid, and then we'll have our function. So 3, we're at negative 2. At 4, we're at 0. And at 7, we're up at 2. So we have a starting point, this little tip right here. This is the initial point, and it's going to go this way and continue forever. And I want to talk about the domain and the range a bit, just so that you can kind of look at what it is and see it on the graph. It says the x values are greater than 3. So if we look at our x values right here, 
they start at three. They don't go to the left of three, they go to the right. And if we look at our y values, so that they're greater than negative two, with the exception of that dotted line I put, if you look at negative two and draw that line across, the y values are all above negative two. So our domain and range really do fit with our graph. Number two, our next example. We're gonna do the same way. We're going to find the domain by setting what's inside the radical greater than or equal to zero. So the domain really plays a huge part in figuring everything out, greater than or equal to zero. I'm gonna multiply both sides by negative two. That gives me x minus two is greater than or equal to zero. So x has to be greater than or equal to two. And this is my domain. Now, to find the range, you can simply plug in the domain value here into the equation and find the range. So 2 minus 2 is 0. Half of 0 is 0. The square root is 0 is 0. Plus 1 is 1. So my range, y, such that y is greater than or equal to 1. And we'll check it with our graph when we get things going. Now, we want to look at our reference points. We're going to use the same reference points for every one of these. But what we do to those points is going to change. So this is now a b value. And remember, it's 1 over b. So when we multiply, we want to multiply by just the negative 2. And because it's messing with the horizontal, we want to multiply the x value by negative 2. 2. Our h, so b here is negative 2, our h value is 2, and our k value is 1. h changes the x, so after we multiply by that negative 2, we're going to add 2, and then we're going to add 1 to the k value. And we're going to change each of these points. So 0 times negative 2 is 0, plus 2 is 2, 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, plus 2 makes that the 0, and 1 plus 1 is 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, negative 8 plus 2 is a negative 6, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So those are the new three points we're going to graph. So we simply graph them. 2, 1 is here, 0, 2 is here. And negative 6, which I have to little fudge a little bit, is 3 is going to be here. Now, our graph is actually going to flip and go the other way. And the reason being is our b value is negative. So it's kind of going that opposite direction. And if we look at it, and we talk about our domain and our range, we said our domain had to be greater than, where are we? Domain had to be greater than 2. And if we look, the x values, it starts at 2 and goes to the left. So do we need to fix that? By all means, we need to fix it because one of the things we didn't pay attention to is that when we divide it by the negative 2 over here, that actually flips our symbol. So this should be less than that. And this is why we always check it. Now, our range values, are they greater than positive 1? Yep, they're still greater than positive 1. But when we multiply by a negative with any inequalities, we have to remember to flip that symbol. So go back and check always your domain and range and make sure you have those symbols going the right direction. Now, our last couple examples here on this side is writing the equation. We're going to write a function that matches each graph using reference points and whatnot. So I'm going to take a couple seconds right here, and I'm going to just clear off all this other stuff so I have some room to write on the other side so we can get these functions. Now, notice for each equation, they gave me whether I'm looking for A or whether I'm looking for the B value. So we want to make sure that we pay attention to equations because it is important to know whether you're looking for A or B. It does help us. We want to find the initial starting point. So find the place where it has the dot and the arrows going in the opposite direction. So for this one, it, the initial start is at 1, negative 2, right here where the dot is. We're going to use that because that is our h 
and our k values. So we have g of x equals the square root of 1 over b, and our h value is 1, so we get x minus 1, and our k value is a negative 2. So we're just going to plug those in. Now, we have to find our b value to be able to write our equation. And they gave us another point at 0, negative 1. So we're going to plug that in for the x and the g of x. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 here for the g of x because that's our y value. 1 over b, and I'm going to plug in 0 here, minus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add this 2 to both sides. So I get 1 equals the square root of 1 over b, and I'm also going to simplify any home side here. So that's 0 minus 1, which is just minus 1. Now, to get rid of the negative, or to get rid of the square root and finish solving for b, I'm going to square both sides. So that gives me 1 equals, whoops, I'm getting rid of that square root. So now I have 1 over b times negative 1. I'm going to multiply both sides by the negative 1. So I get negative 1 equals 1 over b. Um, there's several ways you can do this. You can put a 1 under here and cross multiply. So that's negative 1b equals 1. Solve for b, you still get negative 1. And now that we know what b is, we're going to go back and we're going to write our equation. Now, it's important to note, b is negative, and it makes sense because our parabola, our arm of our parabola, is flipped going the other direction. So here comes our equation. g of x equals, this is just 1 over negative 1 x minus 1, and that's inside the radical, minus 2. I do want to simplify this. That's negative 1, g or x minus 1, minus 2, g of x. And there is my equation for number 3. Now, we're going to erase all this so that we can work on number 4. And getting it down where we find the value of a. So again, the first thing we want to do is find that initial starting point right here. That is negative 2, 1. That is my h and my k. So I'm going to plug it into my form of my equation. a square roots of x minus a negative 2. k is a 1. That double negative becomes a positive. So I get a square roots of x plus 2, plus 1. Now, I have this g of x over here, and I have another point on my graph. I have that negative 1, 2, so I'm going to plug it in. 2 equals a times the square root negative 1, plus 2, and then the plus 1. I'm going to go through and simplify because I need to solve for a. So I'm going to subtract 1 both sides. And I'm going to simplify inside here. That's times the square root of 1. The square root of 1 is just 1. So in this case, a is just 1. Did we make all our math correct? I believe so. So now, plugging values in. Oh, no, we didn't make things correct. I goofed over here. This should be a negative 1. thought that looked kind of funky. So we would add 1, and this wouldn't be 1, it'd be 3. So a equals 3. If a point's below, it has to be negative 1, not positive 1. That must have been when I was writing the problem down. So g of x equals 3 times the square root of x plus 2. And remember, k is actually negative 1. That was my mistake with the point. We did the math right, but I had written the point wrong. All right, we have one more example of a word problem because I know you guys love them. And so let me get the, uh, the swivel loop over so you guys can get a good look at this and get it written into your notes. And get that to get a good look. So the car with good tires is on a dry road. The speed in miles per hour from which the car can stop in a given distance d is given by s of d equals the square root of 96d. Use distances 20 
40, 60, 80, and 100. So what we are actually doing on here is we're giving us the distances it wants us to use to find the average rate of change. And so we just want to kind of look at things and look at the graph. So when we plug our values in, the distance into the speed for 20, if I plug it in, 20 for distance, and I multiply by 96 and take the square root, I get 43.8. When I plug in 40, I get 62.0. 60, I get 75.9. For 80, 87.6. And for 100, 98.0. And then I'm going to graph those points. So when I graph them, at 20, I'm at 43 which, I don't know, is somewhere right about there. And these are going to be estimates. At 40, you're at 62, which is about there. At 60, you're at 75, which is, I don't know, going to be about there. At 80, you're at 87, which is going to be about there. And at 100, you're at about 98, which is there. The important thing to note is that at zero, you'd be at zero. And, well, I kind of missed some of my points, but you get the idea. It makes this little curve. And what's showing is that the average rate of change is increasing so the stopping distance increases for speed whereas the slower you're going the less distance that you need to stop so you should be looking at that this fact that when you speed it takes longer for your car to stop in motion